Once upon a time, a nymph named Eco. She was so beautiful, but she was also the bearer of a curse, that of echoing others' sound and last words, hence her name. One day, she spotted a young and very handsome young man and fell in love with him. She followed him in the woods but could not speak to him due to the curse upon herself. The young man was a hunter named Narcissus, and because of how beautifully handsome he was, he had so many women in love with him. Unfortunately, none of them had his interest in return. One day, Narcissus and Eco met in the woods, and despite the curse that she was bearing, she managed to make Narcissus understand that she had feelings for him. Alas, the young man rejected Eco, and she ran away in tears. She was devastated. How could she not? She cried and cried and wished to the God that Narcissus one day falls in love with someone that he may never have. Eco then faded, leaving behind only her remains and voice. A day came when young and handsome Narcissus was hunting. He stopped by the river to drink some water. As he leaned towards the water, he saw a handsome man looking back at him in the water. The young man was so good looking that Narcissus fell in love with him and wouldn't leave the river for fear of leaving his love interest behind. So, Narcissus remained by the river, talking to and admiring his reflection until he wasted away, leaving behind only a flower known today as the Narcissus flower. This is a myth by Ovid and how the term Narcissism and Narcissist were born. In psychology, narcissism is defined as having an inflated sense of self characterized by a sense of entitlement, a need for admiration, and lack of empathy to others. On a medical level, narcissist personality disorder or NPD is defined by the Diagnosis and Statistical Manual of Mental Health Disorders 5th edition or DSM-5 as a pattern of grandiosity, a need for admiration, and a lack of empathy to others. The DSM-5 has a full list of 9 symptoms that people suffering with NPD exhibit, and in order to be diagnosed by a qualified professional, one must show at least 5 of those symptoms. Narcissism and NPD share some of, if not all, those traits. Bear in mind that diagnosing anyone is beyond my scope of practice. Therefore, I'll only be talking about narcissism in comparison to the fat acceptance community. The comparison is drawn from my observation and research on that movement, as well as my own opinions. I will also be using footage throughout the video and that is in no point to diagnose any individual in the videos, but rather support the points that I'll be making. With this being out of the way, let's beast it. Grandiose sense of self-importance is also called delusion of grandeur and is the illusion or exaggerated sense of self-importance, power, knowledge, or identity even in the absence of any supporting evidence. Loving your body and being confident about your body is also not promoting obesity. It's brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular, never the same, totally unique. I actually don't know how people can hate me. Apart from my good looks and my intelligence, I'm actually a nice human being. You see, when you're confident, you don't need to tell people you are, and that's not just for confidence. There is a saying that goes like this, 
Only empty barrels make noise. Think about it for a second. Picture it. Smart people don't try to convince others that they're smart. Beautiful people don't try to convince people that they are. When you have something and you know you have it, it shows in your behavior, not in your words. Even your silence alone has a presence of its own and one that earns respect with no effort. Going around claiming that you're anything only shows your insecurities and lack of confidence because it's not your audience that you are trying to convince but yourself. A fantasy is the process of imagining or making up stories in one's mind that are not always or at all true. We can see this in the perception of fat acceptance activists of the world toward them and the insistence that they're always being judged even when in the majority of cases, no matter how big they may be, no one else may even be noticing their presence. Fat people know how much other people, especially on planes, do not want to be in physical contact with us. We can feel it, we can see it on your faces, we can hear it in your groans. Sometimes we can read it on your phones when you're texting people about us. These individuals tend to believe that they're special and can only be understood by or should only associate with other special people or institutions. This might also explain why they would and have hijacked a few other groups and claiming them for themselves and themselves only such as body positivity, people with disability, LGBTQ+. Though I have an upcoming video on fat acceptance and the LGBTQ communities coming soon, and so on. We believe trans and non-binary people about their identities and we support their identities. We support disabled and mentally ill people. We believe black lives matter. And when criticism comes their way, they always put forward those labels in an effort to change the narrative from don't you dare telling the word of my flaws to you're an so for going after marginalized groups. This person misgenders me, uses slurs, ridicules me, claims I'm lying about my life experiences and make many rude comments about my weight, health and disabilities. They specifically target me as a multiply marginalized person. Do you see what's going on? It's called blame shifting. And invalidated. So I'm going to delete those comments that do so and then block those people who are doing that and harming me. So you guys can keep with your hate comments, you can keep with your opinions. Because nine times out of ten, I will probably just roast you or delete it. So if you're not on my page to listen and learn, then get the f out of here. They're good at distracting their audiences to hide their own shitty behaviors toward that same audience and others. This one is pretty self-explanatory. But acceptance activists and influencers have the strong belief that they're the center of the universe and only them matter. They crave attention and we do anything for it. Something that will be further elaborated later on in the video. I've had a lot of messages from folks that are anorexic that are livid and angry because they feel like I'm lying. Me say I'm anorexic was really jarring. Fat acceptance activists also put a big emphasis on the number of followers that they or their idols have and would use that metric to measure worth. As someone who has um, almost 140,000 followers. With that preaching tone, no wonder you have 700 subs. Mm, you're just jealous. She has more followers than you and you want them. Ah, uh, yes. Because your worth resides in the amount of following that you have and the smaller that number, the more worthless you are. These were comments left under my contents. 
This point can be summarized in one sentence. The world has to cater to my poor lifestyle choices. The word entitlement has a few definitions, but the one that characterizes the fat acceptance community is the feeling of having the right to all the good things in life without necessarily having to work for them. The Center for Disease Control, or CDC, estimates that 36.9% of the US population are obese, a number that is expected to increase. Why it is true that it is not 100% the fault of obese individuals becoming obese? It is not entirely true either that they don't play a part in their own obesity. That acceptance will fight back claiming that it is normal or even healthy to be obese and they're marginalized because of something that they cannot control such as their size or their weight. And because of that, the world has to make adjustments for their every choices. Having a preference is something like, I'm looking for a partner who likes kayaking, or wakes up early in the morning, or loves pizza. But when your preferences exclude an entire group of marginalized people, that's problematic. That's fat phobic. People are entitled to date who they want to date, and it's okay to not find someone unattractive. Heck. We all are ugly to someone for beauty is in the eye of the beholder. In my book, if you ugly inside, then you ugly outside. And there is no amount of makeup that you are going to put on that's going to change that. And you have an opportunity to switch a seat with a fat person so that they can be in a seat that's more comfortable for them, please do that. If you are too fat that you can't fit in one plain seat, then buy as many seats as you can comfortably fit in or travel by other means. The alternative is to lose some weight because airlines are here to make a profit, not accommodate every single person's need regardless of their body sizes. You feeling excluded from aspects of life because you suffer from a mental illness and or low self-esteem is not the same barrier as being literally excluded from the aspect of life due to systematic and interpersonal fat phobia. For example, fat people are denied access to health insurance, life insurance, and denied medical care or overlooked for jobs and for promotions for not looking right. Ah uh, yes, because those living with mental illnesses have no barriers at all. Hey, you with the ADHD would just lost your job because you're very impulsive. Stop pretending and start getting serious already because you just threw away a job opportunity that an obese person could have had but didn't because they were just too fat. Or you, D'Angelo Wallace, you stopped posting videos for almost a year and now you blaming depression? Stop being lazy already, my dude. Eugenia Cune. Eat your food, girl, and stop pretending that life is any difficult for you. Here, have a burger, or maybe two, while we are at it. Is fat acceptance truly speaking in favor of obese individuals or is the movement using obese individuals for its own gain or should I say the gains of the individuals at the top line and all within the movement? While this video does not cover the brutes of fat acceptance itself, which is currently in work for an upcoming video, it is nonetheless worth mentioning that the movement itself exploits obese individuals at their expenses or that of other groups. This also applies to so-called doctors and health professionals who attach health at every size and other buzzwords or phrases to their names. This is done with the sole purpose to inflate their following and make a profit off of that following. And I don't fit. 
what we have seen presented as the diagnosis for anorexia. We have a, like, a lack of diversity and representation. Desolida here pretended to be working out and even hired the personal trainer to work her way into a brand deal with Fabletics. No post of her working out ever saw the light of day after she did. And please, don't tell me she out of the blue became shy about working out. Because she is sure not shy about eating huge quantities of food and in front of people for someone who's supposedly anorexic. About the workout post disappearing, my guess is that she received backlash from her community because exercising is diet culture and taking part in it is a betrayal to them all and she'd lose a lot if not most of her following over it so it all stopped but i digress Narcissists like the ability to perceive others as being, let alone these beings' emotions. How cool they as to narcissists, nothing and no one else matters but they alone and their emotions. And they usually are loud about it. So if you're not on my page to listen and learn, then get the f*** out of here because I don't want to hear about your thin tears i don't care about your feelings and i'm not here to protect your fraudulent masculinity your feelings are not my responsibility go f yourself being vulgar to others as they belittle them also comes off as needing grounds to stand on because they need to appear powerful and confident without being so and having the knowledge that they're the perfect opposite of what they're saying which comes back to the grandiose sense of self-importance discussed earlier The false belief that others are envious of us is sometimes the result of us being envious to them. And this is seen a lot in the fat acceptance movement. This is also a subtle way for people in that community to hide their inability to take criticism. Hey, if I act like I'm fearless with enough name calling and vulgarity in my address to my critics, then I am a badass who is showing the world why those who disagree with me do so because they wish they were me. According to the Oxford Dictionary, arrogance is the behavior of a person when they feel that they are more important than other people and are rude to them or do not consider them. But acceptance likes to hide in the echo chambers where only the lies that they spread are gospel and anyone who disagrees or even asks questions to understand better is blocked. I quite literally delete troll comments from my page multiple times a day. They obviously lack the understanding on how to read and interpret research articles because not everyone went to school to be a researcher like I did. Claiming to know better than anyone else only proves that you know even less. And acting like you're better than everybody else only proves that you're nothing at all and very troubled by the truth. Narcissistic individuals are grandiose because they don't want to see and deal with their own insecurities and getting them down to the root of their insecurity who in fact made them depressed, hence they're avoiding the topic in the first place. Unlike popular belief, what they're lamentably trying to convince the world of these individuals lack self-love and confidence. Instead, they're full of self-loathing and insecurities. And because of this, they're very vulnerable to criticism and create false identity to cope with their very own self-hatred. Thanks for watching, besties. Train mean.